That same evening, they set off for a meeting at one of the world's biggest clubs. For the first time ever, an approach for a player behind his club's back, illegal under industry rules and known as tapping up, would be captured on camera. Tapping up would normally work by uh, a covert meeting being arranged between an agent and a player or a club official and a player uh, without the knowledge of the player's own club. Football's former enforcer explained the rule book to us, though he wouldn't comment on any individual clubs or agents. It may well be a case of the agent who's got the player as a client tipping off a club that his client is unhappy at his own club. So touting so, him around? So, in effect, touting him around. Tonight, Peter was touting an England junior international from Middlesbrough called Nathan Porritt. Although then aged just 15, he's one of the brightest prospects in English football. Peter admitted that several big premiership clubs were already in touch. Crucially, his club Middlesbrough didn't know. The club is not supposed to meet the player, you know, but I had a new castle at my house. Okay. The player was more than a father, so <coughs> on Friday. So, uh, it was Middlesbrough there? I don't know. Just right oh, yeah, good, good. Okay. Allegations of tapping up have recently centred around one club. Chelsea. Oh, he's dodged his way through there, Joe Cole. Well, that's a superb goal. The Blues have been Premiership champions for the last two seasons. But that hasn't stopped Chelsea using their money to acquire more players by breaking the rules. Yes! Yes! Last year, the club was fined half a million pounds by Premiership bosses, the Premier League, for tapping up Ashley Cole from rivals Arsenal. Chelsea have been warned they'd be docked three Premiership points if they were ever caught doing it again. Why should another club uh, put all that effort into a particular player just to have him snatched away by one of the bigger boys? And, you know, it is wrong and it's improper that they should do that. And Peter and Canute were heading for Chelsea. They were here to meet Frank Arneson, Chelsea's director of youth football. He's a big mover and shaker in the football world. But Canute had another worry. Yeah, there we go. Canute had worked with Chelsea before as a scout. Would it raise suspicions about his new role? I know that place. How's it going? I recognise you straight away. There you go. It's going well. It's going well. good, yeah. yeah. It was a good situation for, for Peter that he sees, OK, other people in the game know. So, what about our, our player Nathan? Chelsea's Frank Arneson tried to explain to Peter how he might use his player, Nathan Porritt, in their youth team. Nathan is coming, he will get space, and then say, OK, this is your position and you have to play in under 18 and in the reserves. But Peter was more interested in knowing how much money Chelsea would offer Nathan to leave his club. I would think it's 99.9% .9 sure he's leaving Middlesbrough. Mm. He likes to stay up there, so I'm not... Or, or, no, he's, he's, he's not, open. I think what it would... You would need an indication what you are offering, Frank. Mm. Arneson then got to the point. Uh, 150,000 spread in three years, and we can do it like... The bonus and this and this, split it up in salary, we can talk about that. Arneson was offering Peter's player £150,000 over three years, even though he was at another club's youth academy. So we have a, we have a fair, fair, fair offer for him. If it can be proven that a club has done that, then they would obviously face a sanction from the appropriate league or the FA. So they'd be charged for it? The likelihood is that they will be charged. You can keep contact. Frank, what I'll do, I'll give you a ring. I'll come to my court. After the meeting, it was clear Peter had a problem with Chelsea's £150,000 offer. Chelsea. We need more money than that. No, no. no. <coughs> In his world, even that sort of money wasn't enough for a 15-year-old boy. So Peter touted Nathan Porritt around some more. Next stop, 
one of the most famous clubs in the world. Liverpool. Britain's most successful club, current holders of the FA Cup and last year's European champions. Again, at meetings here, Canute was recognised by coaching staff. Hi, Ian. Knut. Yes, we... I know. You've met him? Yeah, we yeah. met him in Wales. Where? That's right, in Wales. Got my A licence Coaching yeah. course. Coaching yeah. course. Oh, I didn't know. You learn know little things about your horn. Yeah. Both at the academy and at the senior team, Liverpool officials made their interest in Nathan clear. Even though Peter was touting him around in a blatant breach of the rules. I think we could sign him and then bring him here at 17. Definitely bring him here because he becomes a pro. And this was despite it being very clear that Middlesbrough didn't know. I don't know if you kids about it or not, but I want to do my job because of the other people see Despite our evidence, both Liverpool and Chelsea have denied their meetings broke any industry rules. Now we were ready for the January transfer window. Would Peter let Canute into a real deal? Sure enough, Peter began the new year by telling Canute that he'd set up a bent deal with a major club. He said he'd arranged a £30,000 bun for its chief scout. It's not that big of a deal. £30,000 for you, just chief scout. He's a good guy. And that, that's a fortune for him. But now he's trying to put another one in for us. And we don't have to do it every day. You understand? OK. And he also admitted he'd offered buns in the past. When you first go and you approach people that go, oh, no, no, you know, yeah. when you just sum them up and money to who I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, this one, I know we do good business and he's a good guy. But things were about to escalate. Canute received another phone call that set off a dramatic turn of events which would lead us to a top manager. Peter rang to say that Tenny, the first agent we had met back in Paris, was doing a transfer and needed Mr. Silverman's help with a bun. When Canute rang Tenny, Tenny was back in Britain. Just got a yeah. phone call from Peter. Yeah. And he said, um, you're on a deal here in the UK. Yeah. And you might, yeah. you know, might uh, need some, some money from my side. Is that... Yeah, I am uh, uh, <laughs> The player Tenny was involved with was about to sign for a major British club. A few days later, Tenney told Canute that he'd arranged a £100,000 bung with the club manager to seal the deal. Tenney's assistant had already handed over the first half. He gave the first bung. He said uh, the first 50. Ah, OK, 50,000. Canute was told when we would have to pay the next 50,000. This weekend. This weekend. This weekend, yeah. OK, that's fine. I told him on Friday. Tenny said our manager had been furious that he hadn't been paid all of it straight away. He called me again yesterday. Now he's at the, after he received the first part, he called me again yesterday. He said, OK, you, this guy, I apologize because I was hungry on uh, Friday, but, but you came on Saturday, so I'm not happy. Tenny stressed that our manager was careful who he trusts. Now, he's working very, very carefully and intelligently. Only people in those Peter's connections appeared to be paying off. Now we needed the cash. Canute went to pick up the 